the most ironic thing is I never realized how much I love learning until I graduated from school. So that said a lot about our education system. So the other day, I was watching video of people regret attending universities. I regret going to college. college. It's a waste I of my time really and my money. I really hate I'm wasting college. My time. I going regret for college. going to college. And that led me questioning the problems of our education systems. And that eventually led to this video right here. I feel like I'm writing those critical thinking essay with the topic being the problem of education systems in Hong Kong. But I do have strong opinions on this and I do want to share about them. Please do keep in mind that everything I'm going to be talking about is referring to public local schools, not private international schools. The culture and the system for international schools are very different. Also, I'm not saying these issues only appear in Hong Kong. I'm pretty sure they do exist in some other countries, but I'm only talking about the case here, so let's get into it. We have clear hierarchy for schools. There are even rankings for kindergarten and primary schools if you look it up. Middle school and high school here are combined together in one as secondary school. And there is an official ranking for secondary school by the government from band 1 to band 3, with band 1 being the best. And for universities, most people have a clear idea on which are the prestigious ones and which are the bottom ones. The problem of these rankings is that they are not only being used to label the schools themselves, but they are being used to label the students as well. For example, if you tell someone you are attending a band one school, people will automatically think that you are a good kid and you are an intelligent student. However, if someone knows that you are attending a band three school, they will kind of look down on you. I experienced this firsthand because when I used to tell people the uni that I go to, they would be like, oh, like you must be smart because you are from that uni, which I appreciate the compliment they gave me, but I don't think anyone's intelligence is solely based on the university they attend. I've also seen people being ashamed of the college they go to because of how the society is labeling them. I personally find these labeling really toxic. It definitely has an impact on students' self-worth, self-esteem, and their study attitude. It's like wherever you go, you'll always be carrying the name of your school and people will just define you based on that, which I just don't understand. I have a lot to say for this one. So usually better ranking schools have straighter rules. I went to a Ben one secondary school and my school was definitely more extreme compared to the average schools. Our school rules are clearly written in the student handbook, but I got rid of all of them once I graduated, so I'm only speaking from what I remember. However, I do remember quite a lot of details. Let's just give you an overview before diving in into the details and the tea. So generally speaking, for schools here, we have to wear school uniforms. We can't dye our hair, we can't wear makeup, we can't put on accessories like hat or jewelry, no tattoos, no piercings, and no manicure, not even clear nail polish. But let's get into details for my school in particular. First of all, we were allowed to have one piercing for each of our ears, but we weren't allowed to wear earrings. We were only allowed to wear those like clear ear pins. And if your hair is past shoulder length, you will need to tie your hair up. However, you can use hair tie in particular colors. I think those colors are black, brown, gray, navy, and yellow. But even when you're sticking to those colors, your hair tie must be really simple, no crazy decorations, and your hairstyles must be really simple as well. From what I remember, guys were not allowed to have long hair. I'm not sure about that. Our school uniforms have a vest or a cardigan that comes with it, but I stated that we were only allowed to wear the cardigan when the temperature is dropped below a certain degree, which I don't remember the exact temperature, obviously. And for our winter uniforms, we have a winter jacket, but it's still not warm enough, so our school let us wear our own jacket when the temperature is dropped below a certain degree. But we were only allowed to wear jackets in particular colors. Again, black, brown, navy, gray, 
gray and yellow, I believe. And also there can be any logos or prints for your jackets. What I don't understand is that everyone's body is different. Some people are more sensitive to cold weather and some people are more sensitive to hot weather. You can't just set a temperature and be like, okay, so this is a temperature that you may feel cold and so you're allowed to wear this, which completely makes no sense to me. We were also not allowed to bring any electrical devices and we were not allowed to date. What I meant by you're not allowed to date is that you can't even hold hands with your partner, not even after school. I don't know how I completely skipped this part because this is the tea I was talking about. I found this complete letter about my second year of school from a parent. So when her daughter first started school, one day she got lashed out verbally by four teachers regarding her hair. They said her hair was too short and they were questioning why she got such haircut. My school emphasized a lot on not being Bill K. Lab Yi, which is hard to translate but I guess you could say unconventional. It was unconventional anyway. The mom was surprised that her daughter was crying at school because she was such a tough person. And on another day, her daughter was wearing a dark yellow jacket to school during winter, but one of the teachers kept insisting that her jacket was an orange, so that left her no choice but to take it off, so she ended up freezing the entire day. And again, the school rule is stated that we have to wear black leather shoes with heels no taller than 3 centimeters. But her daughter had some conditions with her feet and feet pain, so she got a pair of shoes from a store that specializes in school shoes. But the teacher from my school said her shoes were not in line with the school rules. The mom provided a letter from the shoe store as proof but my school didn't accept it as the letter wasn't from a specialized doctor. I also found a news article about the extreme rules of my school. It's that a bunch of students need to stay for detentions because they have a 3mm white stripe on their jacket. Breaking the school rules will leave us a record depending on how bad it is, but usually we need to stay for detentions as well. For example, if you're late for 15 minutes or above, then you need to stay for like an hour after school for detentions. Our school always teach us the importance of Ming Bin Si Fei, which is distinguish what's right and what's wrong, but they are being unreasonable with their students like Practice what you preach. Rules and discipline are important, but so is compassion and flexibility. A lot of these rules are just ridiculous and have nothing to do with our conduct. Our schools have all these restrictions on their appearance to reinforce the image of a good student, which is such a twisted concept in my opinion. Just because you dye your hair one shade lighter or just because you put on nail polish doesn't mean that you don't care about your study or you are a bad student. Our appearance has nothing to do with our intelligence or us as a person. They were treating us like a little kid even when we were 17 or 18 years old. Discipline is very important, but we also need to learn to have control over our lives instead of being controlled by all these external rules. Because once these rules are gone, what are we supposed to do? When we graduated from high school, we finally have the freedom to use our phone during lectures at college. And that is the time we finally got to learn to have self-control. Going to school isn't supposed to feel like going to prison. I really like watching these American teenage shows to enjoy the school life that I never have. And I never went back to school once I graduated six years ago. Even at work, we always emphasize the importance of work-life balance, but I don't really see that with schools here. We always have hours of homework to finish every day and finishing homework at like 11 pm is pretty normal besides the big exams we also have quizzes and tests almost every single week and sometimes we even have multiple tests in a week i find it really funny that whenever we have holidays our teachers will always give us extra work to do even if it's just like a one-day holiday on mid-autumn festival so holiday is never holiday for us and the only holiday we can enjoy is summer holiday but we also need to finish these 
workbooks for Chinese, English, and math usually, and that add up to about a hundred pages of workbooks. I'm learning French on my own currently, so I do understand the importance of practices and doing exercises. But I do believe there's a good balance on how much exercises are enough, and more than that, it's just ineffective. Providing us knowledge is just part of the responsibility for school. What's more important is to help students to develop an interest for learning. But I doubt anyone could enjoy learning with such intense workload. The most ironic thing is, I never realized how much I love learning until I graduated from school. So that said a lot about our education system. We have a 12-year free compulsory education from primary school to high school. Kindergarten isn't part of the compulsory education, but basically everyone attends kindergarten. And we start learning English at three years old. So by the time we graduate high school, we have already learned English for 15 years. But a lot of students still struggle or not having the confidence to carry conversation in English because we didn't really learn spoken English at school. Private tutoring is such a huge industry here. We have these celebrity tutors with thousands of students, which is insane. I know. I personally taken some of these classes before, but what they teach us is only how to break down the exam questions or some strategies for exams. It's not really helping us to have a better understanding of the subject itself. I personally had quite a lot of experiences with tutoring. I've done private tutoring, tutoring at a tutoring center, and tutoring for primary school, which is basically an extra class they attend after the official school hours. I'm currently doing that for primary school tutoring two classes of primary one students three days a week. They just started primary school. They didn't even have time to adapt to a new environment, and the school is already pushing them. So you could really imagine how stressful it is. The education system here does emphasize the importance of extracurricular activities, but from what I observe, they're not emphasizing it for students to realize or exploring their talents and interests. They emphasize it because they said it's important for us to have extracurricular activities on their resume, so that we will have better chances to get into university. So. At the end of the day, it's really just for our academic performances. So once we finish high school, we need to take a public exam called HKDSC for us to apply for university, just like Gaokao in China. There are four compulsory subjects, including Chinese, English, math, and liberal studies, and there are minimum requirements for these subjects in order to get into university. We'll need to get level three for Chinese and English, and level two in math and liberal studies. The Chinese subject is literally the killer subject. In 2020, 40 percent of students didn't get a level three or above in Chinese. You may wonder why is it so hard when we're literally native speakers? Because this subject is really about the language itself. It's more like. A linguistic subject rather than studying for our usage and understanding. Chinese is a language that is really rich and deep. You really need to have a deep understanding of the language, um, the culture, and the history. We even need to learn classical Chinese, which no one uses it anymore. And in order to get really high marks, you will need analytical skills to really understand the meaning on what the test is really about. I don't think you can get a high score in writing unless you can write like an author. I don't have trouble expressing myself in Chinese or understanding Chinese at all, but I struggle with this subject so much. I remember when I first got into secondary school, I got 28 marks in my Chinese rating paper because it was so hard. And whether you can get in university or not is really depends on this one exam. No matter how well your academic performances are in six years of secondary school, if 
you didn't do well in this one exam, there's basically no way for you to get into university unless you were take the exam a year later or get into a higher diploma or a community college. So if you're dealing with something in your personal life that really take a toll on you during the public exam period, you just miss the chance to get into university for that academic year and you just have to figure things out yourself. I understand the importance of having a degree nowadays, but at the same time, there are so many possibilities out there. We didn't even have time to explore them, and we already need to submit our university application. We did have career talks at high school, but they're basically helping us to figure out which major we should go for when we apply for universities, or which major will have a higher chances to get in, or how to get back into universities if we didn't perform well in the public exams. That's exactly the case for me. I never have the time to think about what I'm truly passionate about and what skills I want to acquire until I graduated from university. After two years for my associate's degree and three years for my bachelor's, I am now finally figuring life out and really thinking about what I want to do. I could make a whole separate video on that topic, but yeah, that's just my opinions and thoughts on this topic. Please share your thoughts and experience. Even if you're not studying Hong Kong, I would love to hear about it. That's it for today's video. I will see you in my next one. Bye!